Okay. I think I think it's recording. I didn't get the countdown. Sometimes it happens, and sometimes it doesn't. So, <clears throat> uh, hopefully, with the Ionic thing and Worksheet 4, you found out either you found out what you did wrong and you were able to, you know, fix that and understand what's going on with the naming and the formulas. Remember the oxidation numbers, the pluses and minuses, getting the pluses and minuses to balance out. That is all ionic bonding. Okay. That's what it is. Now we're dealing with covalent. Now, hopefully in our zoom, uh, I talked about enough of it to kind of give you, to kind of set the stage. I don't want to rehash all of that over again. Uh, although some people probably uh, weren't in the Zoom, and so maybe you, you don't know what's going on. So I, I guess I'll just say this. You're going to feel like it's the same thing that we've been talking about, but I'm telling you it isn't. In an ionic bond, there is a transfer. Some, uh, some atoms are gaining electrons to become negative. Some atoms are losing electrons to become positive. They're oppositely charged. They attract a transfer. With covalent bonding, there is sharing, sharing of electrons. Okay. Um, there was going to be an activity that we would do in class uh, where you would get, and I, I think I described this to one class period, um, maybe first period. I think we had this conversation uh, before break. Um, if, if I were to have three students each sitting at a table, I mean, three students sitting at a table themselves, all packed in there, three of you side by side by side, and I gave each of you three or four Skittles, and all the whole room, there's three students per table in the room, so several tables with three students per table, each student having three or four Skittles in front of them. And then I were to call out each student's name randomly, just randomly start calling students' names. And when I call your name, you have to come up to my table and give me a cup that has eight Skittles in it, eight Skittles. But you only have like three or four because I'll randomly distribute three or four to every student in the room. So how are you going to get eight Skittles in a cup to bring to me when I call your name when you only have three or four? You're probably going to borrow from those sitting near you. So you, you'll put your own in there, and then you'll throw a couple extras from other people. That'll get you eight. You'll come up here. You'll show me the eight, and I'll say, good job. You'll go back to your seat. Everybody will get their Skittles back because somebody at that table that you just came from, their name may be called next, and then they have to come up with a cup with eight Skittles in it, like the three or four of their own, plus they're going to have to borrow from the other people at the table. So this activity we would have done, and it would have been like mayhem, like people would have been scrambling and coming because I'd have been calling names like fast. It would have been going real fast. And... Each student has to then bring those eight Skittles to show me. Now, what's the significance of eight? You tell me. What is the significance of eight? We've talked about eight being significant here. The octet, remember, the octet rule. Here's the thing. Not everybody has eight. But together, collectively, you can share those Skittles because at the table, there's more than eight. So you have plenty of electron or plenty of Skittles, which are representing the electrons we're talking about. There's plenty to share to get the octet, but each of you individually don't have enough. You have to share, but then they get them back. See, it's not like a transfer. A transfer means it's gone. You gave it away. You don't have it anymore. And that's how you satisfied your octet. With a covalent bond, you are sharing those electrons so that you have them sometimes and then sometimes someone else has them. But you each have access to them and can use them when you need them. It's kind of like this. I, I tell this analogy um, every year. I have an extension ladder 
my neighbor does not. Uh, my neighbor has a post hole digger. Um, or no, no, actually, he doesn't. It was his father-in-law. My neighbor has a drag. But you can drag your drive like a gravel driveway, hook it to the back of your mower, and put some center blocks on it, and you can drag and you know smooth out the gravel and stuff. So he has a drag. I don't. I have a uh, an extension ladder, twenty foot extension ladder. He doesn't. So what do you think happens when he needs an extension ladder? Actually, he doesn't call. He just texts. Hey, can I borrow your extension ladder? And I say, sure. It's in the barn. You know where it is. He comes and gets it uses it. And what do you think he does when he's done? He brings it back, puts it in my barn where he found it. And then when I need a drag to drag my driveway, I don't have one. So what do you think I do? I text my neighbor, say, Hey, can I borrow your drag? He's like, sure. Barn's open. So I go down and get his drag, throw it back to the truck, use it. What do you think I do when I'm done? I take it back to his barn, put it back where I found it. So each of us doesn't have both of those tools. We only have one each, but it's like I have a drag, even though I don't, because I can borrow it anytime I need it. And it's like he has an extension ladder because he can borrow it anytime he needs it. It's in my barn. It's available. That's the sharing thing. Okay. It's not a transfer. If it was a transfer like Ionic, I would say, Hey, keep my ladder. I don't want it. I don't need it. Just keep the ladder. You can have them both. You can have, obviously it's, our, it's already your drag. You can have the ladder too. That's a transfer. I no longer have either then. I don't have access to either. So that's a transfer. That's not what's happening. That's what's happening in Ionic bonding. There's a transfer. In uh, covalent, no transfer, it's sharing, back and forth, back and forth, sharing, okay? It's definitely different. Now, I'm, I'm going to sketch a couple things on this document because this is, this is your assignment, the Compounds Unit Worksheet 5. But in this worksheet, there is, you're supposed to use some manipulatives like these little, these little uh, molecular model things. There's like little sticks, there's little sticks, and then each little ball here represents a certain atom. And so I'm going to show you some stuff with those as, as we go through. So you're going to have to, I'll tell you when, you'll have to pause the video, go look at the worksheet and answer some questions, and then come back to the video, hit play again, and then I'll be explaining some things with the molecular models since you don't actually have them in your hands physically. So I, I hope I hope this goes according to plan. Um, so number one question here, you're supposed to construct a dot diagram for H2. Well, what does that mean? H2. Well, H is hydrogen, right? And H2 means that there's two of them that have bonded together. That's actually what happens when hydrogen is in gas form. When hydrogen is a gas out in the atmosphere as a gas, it bonds with another hydrogen. Now, why would they do this? Well, let, let's look at what the dot structure is, the dot diagram for uh, hydrogen. So it is just an H with a dot. Yeah, that's hydrogen. Now, does hydrogen have an octet? No, there's a single electron. How many would it need to have an octet? Two. Remember, the first level only holds two, so we, we can only have two in the first level to be full, and that's an octet, even though it's not eight. Remember, that's the exception. The first level only holding two is the exception to the octet. So what do you think could happen here? If I have another hydrogen somewhere around, I'm going to draw it a different color. Uh, multiple colors would be handy here. So if I draw a hydrogen, another color here, and there's another hydrogen. Do you see how it's possible that this hydrogen can come alongside the other hydrogen? Oh, look at that. What do they now have? 
This hydrogen, the orange one, it has two electrons near it. That's an octet. That's a full first level. The blue hydrogen, it has two electrons near it. They're coming close enough together that they can actually share each other's electrons. One's not transferring to another, okay? So this is not what's happening. You do not have one hydrogen here and then another hydrogen here and then have this hydrogen transfer it to that one. That's not what's happening, okay? That, that's not happening here. There is no transfer because if the blue hydrogen transfers one electron away from it to the orange hydrogen, well, the orange hydrogen's happy now because it has a full first level, but the blue one has nothing, has no electrons, an empty first level. That doesn't help. That doesn't help the hydrogen. So remember, in ionic bonding, the, uh, the atoms that had electrons stolen from them, it actually helped them because the level below that was full, had a full out, new outer level. Okay, the outer level electron, once it gets stolen, would make the next level below that full, which meant that the octet had been reached. That's not happening here. Hydrogen, when it loses that electron, is going to have none. So th that's not going to help it. And so what, what do the hydrogens do? They get close enough together that they can literally share each other's electrons. Okay, so I'm going to get that out of there. Now. Question number two, what have the hydrogen atoms done to fill their first electron energy level? Well, they've shared a pair. Like, they have shared one pair of electrons. That's the answer to that question. Okay. Now, I want you to pause the video for a second here momentarily. Because question number three says, construct a dot diagram below for H2O. H2O. So I'm going to sketch on the screen what the dot diagrams for each of those things looks like. And then I want you to, on your paper, like pause the video and then try to sketch what the dot diagram would look like for the molecule of H2O. Oh, you know what, you know what we should probably do? I should probably define covalent bond. Covalent. Do you know what co means? Co means together. Like to get like if you are co-workers, you're workers that are together. If you are uh co-captains, you are captains together. If you are co-something, uh then it's together. Valent is referring to what? Valence level electrons so covalent it means together sharing valence electrons so atoms sharing valence electrons to complete each other's octet. How about that? That's a pretty good definition. So atoms sharing valence electrons to complete each other's octet. All right, so now let me draw. And again, you should be able to draw these as well. Like you should know that oxygen is a one and a two and a three, four, and then five and six. Like you're supposed to be able to look at the table and find out and remember that oxygen has six electrons around it, okay? And then we have hydrogens over here with just a single, single electron. So if that's what 
the dot diagram for H for hydrogen is, and that's what the dot diagram for oxygen is, how are you going to make H2O work here? Okay, so pause the video, try to sketch that, and then come back. All right, hopefully you paused it and came back. Now, if I say that one, one hydrogen can just park itself right there, and, and what do you see happening here? See, oxygen had an empty spot, and hydrogen can fill the empty spot by putting its electron opposite the one from oxygen. And then oxygen fills hydrogen's empty spot by plugging its electron next to the hydrogen electron. So see, they're sharing that pair between them. Now, we need another hydrogen, though. And so one might be down here, and its electron would go like that. So as you see here, what do you now have around oxygen? A total of what? Eight, right? Six of its own, and then one from each of the hydrogens. And then how many do you have around each hydrogen? Two, which means it's a full first level for hydrogen. So everyone now has an octet. Everyone in the diagram now has an octet visible. You can see that they all have octets. That's something we did not see with ionic bonding. With ionic bonding, the, the atoms that became positive, they had no electrons visible in the dot diagram because they all got taken. In covalent dot diagrams, everything shown in the diagram will have an octet. If, if it doesn't, then something's been done incorrectly or that thing, whatever you've drawn, can't actually exist. Now, next question, circle the shared pairs of electrons in the dot diagram. Okay, so there's one. Oh boy, I'm having, a, I'm having an issue. There's a shared pair. There's a shared pair. So there's two shared pairs here, one between each hydrogen and the oxygen. Now, you're supposed to draw a dot diagram below for carbon and then draw one for chlorine and then figure out how many empty spots. Now, again, by empty spots, hopefully you remember what we're talking about. Like oxygen here has two, right? Empty spot there, empty spot there. And that's how oxygen got its empty spots filled by having hydrogens plug in to the empty spots. So you're going to pause the video again, okay? And then answer these questions about carbon and chlorine. Got that? Pause that and then come back and then I'll tell you what's next. <laughs> All right, so now, hopefully, again, you paused and came back. So now it says, using molecular models, let me get me out of the way here. Using molecular models, construct a model of carbon and chlorine atoms, or a molecule of carbon and chlorine atoms, so that all of the missing electrons have shared pairs. All the empty spots are filled. We need all the empty spots to be filled. So what you would have now in front of you, if you were in the room, <clears throat> you would have a cup that has a bunch of parts in it, a bunch of these things, right? A bunch of the little atom things. And I mean, there's little yellow ones and there's green ones and there's orange and black and red. And there's all sorts of different things. And then there's a bunch of little sticks, okay? A bunch of little sticks. Now, the sticks are there because these have little holes in them. I don't know if you can tell. I apologize for my, my dirty hands. I'm telling you, the, the car that I'm... I wish I could make me full screen for a second, but I can't. This is as big as it gets. So we have a little stick here. And then this one, like the black one here, if you'll notice, there is a hole there. There's one, oh boy, there's one th there. And then, oh gosh, you're gonna have to trust me that there's four. There's one, oh boy. There's, oh geez. Let's say one, two, and then, oh gosh, I have to, three, four, oh, four, oh gosh, we're, there, 
four. I, I don't know. There, there, there's four. You have to trust me. Okay. There, there's four holes on this one. And because there's four holes on this one, which element would that be that you just sketched? Which one had four empty spots? Carbon, right? So this black one here represents carbon, which is interesting because remember, carbon is black. Like we, we did the element lab. Carbon itself is black. So they use a black thing for the uh, carbon. Now, <clears throat> chlorine has how many empty spots? One. And so chlorine, this one, has, as you can see if I move this thing around, it has only a single hole, single empty spot. Now you're supposed to take these pieces and parts and put them together to see if you can make a molecule, we call it, of, oh boy, carbon. So here's what I'm doing. See, I have the carbon and I have like one empty spot on the carbon and it fills the one empty spot on the chlorine. Now this chlorine is done then. There's, there's no more empty spots. There's no more sticks that can fit in this chlorine. So now I got to go to another hole in the carbon, put another stick, and then I can put another chlorine. Oh, remember chlorine is a, is a, is a greenish yellow gas. And look, we got a green ball here to represent um, chlorine. And then let's see another hole in the carbon there because there's three so far. And then I can put another chlorine on that one. And then, and then if I put, I got a fourth empty spot in carbon, then then I can put, and so, so there we have it. There is what you would have built in here. And when you come back next week, we can get these out and, and I can, I can uh, give you some examples. I can put some some names of elements and stuff on the board and then you can f try to figure out which which atom is represented by which ball here and then put things together this is called a ball and stick model uh, for obvious reasons probably and so this here there's how many chlorines and then how many carbons which again you're supposed to be answering these questions as well, like as you go through. Um, and then you're supposed to sketch a dot diagram that represents this, of how this could possibly be, okay? So you're gonna need to do, do that, okay? But this is what you would have built had you been in class. And let's see, what else is there on here? Now we have, then you uh, do, 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 circle the shared pairs. You're supposed to draw dot diagrams, which you will hopefully do. And then, oh, then there's sulfur. Okay, sulfur and fluorine. And so you're supposed to draw dot diagrams for sulfur and for fluorine. Then you're supposed to, again, construct this thing again. All right. Um, so instead of the constructing part, um, you're going to have to just do it with dot diagrams. Now, what I'll do, I'll make another video that has all of the answers laid out completely. But right now, I want you to think about what, we, what you've seen so far and what we talked about. Finish this assignment. Uh, I think 17 is the last question there. So answer all the questions through this. Uh, and then I'll have a second video that I'll post that you will have all the answers for. Okay? Everybody good with that? And then I'll show you... I'll show you what the model would be for this one here, for the uh, sulfur and fluorine. I'll show you that, and then you'll see all of the answers. But I want you to attempt and try this first, okay? Try this first, and then when this is due, when this assignment is due, I'll post an answer video for it then that you can go through, which will probably be Friday. Everybody got that? I think that's it. So... Video's over. It's probably way too long. I apologize for that. Um, and then you'll have to go back and look at the answer video after we talk on Friday. But hopefully I've given you enough to at least get started. Sharing, okay, sharing electrons, not transferring, sharing electrons, covalent. All right. Be safe. Uh, I'll see you soon.